In Kiribati, the Ikiribati people live with the water. The rhythm of the day is determined by the tides. Tarawa is no magic atoll we have become accustomed to, but a community struggling with problems. One of them is overpopulation. Here, 70,000 people live crammed together with a population density of 3,000 people per square kilometer. This overpopulation exists because of migration from other islands but especially because of the Christian thought from Genesis 9, verse 7. Be fruitful and increase in number, multiply on the earth and increase upon it. In many places there are Western missionaries and churches. It's dirty and polluted on South Tarawa and people are everywhere. We leave and go to east of Tarawa, to Mike's Lodge. He's an Australian who has lived here for 30 years with his Ikiribati wife. The flood flows inside the lagoon and takes nutrients from the ocean along. The low tide leaves behind tiny sea creatures for the birds. The Ikiribati, as the people are called here, use the tide to hunt for fish. Due to overcrowding, the lagoon is severely overfished. Another problem for the Ikiribati is the rise in sea level. On another island, the first village has already been evacuated we decide to investigate. We check in at Bonriki International Airport. The runway is only closed for people if there's actually a plane. We try our best to forget all the horrible stories we heard about Air Kiribati. We leave for Abayang Island. From the air, we're able to see just how vulnerable Kiribati is to the rise of sea level. It's a thin, low-lying strip of land in the vast ocean. This is the most frightening landing we will ever do. But we have arrived at Abayang Island. The people are incredibly curious and friendly to us. And we are brought to the only guest house the island has to offer. It is fantastic here. Deze aflevering werd mede mogelijk gemaakt door CS Rigging. De tuiger van Zeiland Nederland.